Bruh. And Brevets. Prize picks is still sitting there. Double cheeked up. Brandon Cooks' season long line at 950 and a half. Brandon Cooks is the first player on this list of five bus proof players for 2022 fantasy football. This man has gone over 1,000 receiving yards in six out of the last seven seasons. There is no reason, and most of those seasons were 16 games. He did it last year with Davis Mills, who is now the quarterback. They now have more than one year of chemistry together. They now have an entire offseason together. Six out of the last seven years, he's gone over 1,000 yards. His receiving yardage line is set at 950 on prize picks. If you have not yet gone to prize picks and hit Brandon Cooks and hit the Jonathan Taylor line, I don't know how you're paying rent. I really don't. We're going to help you pay rent, though, okay? Go to prize picks. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit on there, $10 or more, and you're going to get 100% deposit match plus you're getting access to our season-long draft guide, which will launch August 1st. It's got rankings, got everything you need for your fantasy football drafts. So this list of five bus-proof players for 2022 fantasy football is me looking at their ADP and saying, I, I don't see a world in which they finish lower than where they're going right now, but I also don't think that their ceiling is necessarily elite. Because obviously you can rattle off Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. Those guys, of course, they're bust proof. They're going to go fucking bananas this year. But these are guys outside of probably the first round that I feel really, really, really safe using a premium pick on because I know they're going to be a staple of my team. You could put them in the lineup and you can forget about it. Brandon Cook's currently going off at wide receiver 26 is a flex and one of my favorite values in drafts right now. I love him syncing up with Davis Mills again. They really didn't add anything to their offense besides John Mechie. I personally am not a John Mechie fan. I think he's just pure slot guy. That's okay. Also coming off an ACL tear. And don't forget, you know, we talk all about Jameson Williams' ACL tear. John Mechie is also coming off an ACL tear. So there was no real competition in the passing game added to Houston, a team that's, again, going to be really, really bad, going to have to throw the ball a lot. Brandon Cooks, surefire, 950 receiving yards, bust-proof player this year. Number two on this list is Joe Mixon, currently going off the board at RB7. And a lot of y'all took this the wrong way. I made a video last week that was don't draft these five running backs instead draft these five guys and it was more of like a player comp situation where if you're thinking about joe mixon you could wait four or five rounds and grab a guy like josh jacobs because their situations objectively are comparable that was not a knock on joe mixon though i think joe mixon is one of the safest running backs in fantasy football this year that's not in that elite tier i still think it's hard to project his ceiling higher than what it was last year he scored 16 touchdowns last year because the offense was so good and that, they're going to be way better this year than they were last year. They added pieces to the offensive line, legit pieces to the offensive line. Now Burrow's in his second year off of the ACL tear, second year for Jamar Chase. This offense is going to be a well-oiled machine. I don't know what his pass catching capabilities are at this point, Mixon, right? He just continues to wave around 40 to 50 targets. So that's what I'll project for him. But the safety in him being the ground and pound 18 plus carries a game, plus getting all of the goal line work makes him a bust proof player this year. He's not someone that I'm going to get cute about and say, like, I want to take him at the 106 because there are guys with higher ceilings. But, you know, if you're sitting there at the 201, more than happy to grab Joe Mixon as my RB1, knowing he's going to be safe as shit. And I feel the same way with Mr. Mike Evans, currently the wide receiver seven on underdog wide receiver 10 in sleeper. Evans has kind of always been bust proof. He's in the same mold as Brandon Cooks, right? Everyone likes to talk about the thousand yards receiving over and over and over and over again. This year, there's no AB. Gronk is retired. Godwin's going to be out for a while. He's probably not going to step onto the field at 90 plus percent until week seven, eight. Evans should legitimately command double digit, if not like 12 plus targets per game for the first half of the year. Does it keep up? Who knows? Maybe not, but he'll still have explosion games going forward. Evans is one of the easiest, safest picks in fantasy football this year at the wide receiver position. Now, Evans isn't as good as Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams. He's not in that elite tier. He's not a route runner like they are. He does not add explosiveness yards after the catch like those guys do. So his ceiling is not as high as those guys, which is why I felt comfortable putting him on this list. I do. I, I will say, though, I think there's a, a very decent chance that he leads the NFL in touchdowns this year. He's built for that shit. He's built for the red zone. And Tom Brady is even builter for the red zone. So that chemistry down there in the red zone is going to be magical for a long time. And he might rip off 12 touchdowns in the first fucking eight games of this season. So I wouldn't say he's not not the favorite to lead the NFL in touchdowns this year. Feel wonderful about Mike Evans. I also feel wonderful about Nick Chubb. I feel like the fade has gone way too far. Currently the RB 13 in drafts going into the third round, even in one QB league. Now this feels really easy to say, and people are probably going to skip past and be like, obviously we know Nick Chubb. Discounting his rookie year, right? It was his rookie year, but every year since then, Chubb has finished in half PPR points per game 
as the running back nine, the running back five, and the running back eight. He's currently going as the running back 13. So with Deshaun Watson likely out for the year, is the upside there? No, it's not. That's why I feel good about putting him on this list. He's safe as shit because without Deshaun Watson, with shitty quarterback play, with injured backup quarterbacks, he has continued to produce as the RB9, the RB5, and the RB8. It's looking like it's going to be Jacoby Brissett under center, which means they're going to have to lean like crazy on Nick Chubb. And PFF just came out with their offensive line rankings for the 2022 season. And Cleveland, unsurprisingly, number two. They've had an elite offensive line now for many, many years. And it has created holes, which have created ridiculous opportunities for Nick Chubb to blast off an average five, 5.6, and 5.5 yards per carry over the last three years. He does not miss. And if you take him, you will not miss either. Again, I'm starting to feel like although Nick Chubb is a safe player for the most part, the fade has gone way too far on Nick Chubb. And the last guy on this list is a tight end. But before I get into that, I want to ask y'all, who do you see as bust proof players? Because I remember arguing this list last year and I was debating between Woods and Cup and I had been on Team Cooper Cup. So hopefully that helped a lot of y'all out there. My argument was like, they've both been very safe as players, but Cup has the touchdown uh, upside. We've always seen him dominate in the red zone where Woods has kind of faded away in that sense. So I'm curious to see who some of y'all's bust-proof players that you think should be on this list outside of the elite guys. All right, so drop some comments down below. Hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video thus far. Let's move on to the last of the five players. Zach Ertz, the Arizona Cardinals. Currently the tight end 10 off the board. It's just hard for me to see a world where Zach Ertz is not a massive piece of this offense. And I tweeted this out earlier this offseason, so make sure you're following me on Twitter. Zach Ertz is 17 game pace after landing in Arizona last year, right? He got traded midway through the year. He played there for 10 games, okay? So it's not a small, it's not a three-game sample size, it's not a six-game sample size or eight. It's a fucking 10-game sample size. It's big. Pace that out to 17 games. 90 receptions, 133 targets. Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews are the only tight ends to top 111 targets or 78 receptions last year. So Zach Ertz's pace was legitimately in that elite tier. Do I think he's still elite as a player? No, I don't actually ever think that anyone thought he was elite as a player. I think the two arguments you can make against Zach Ertz are that he's getting older and he might be washed, but everything that pointed towards anything was pointing towards the contrary last year with Zach Ertz because he was very good last year. And then they drafted Trey McBride, right? But this is a second round rookie tight end, right? This ain't Kyle Pitts fourth overall. It's not TJ Hawkinson eighth overall. It ain't even those Njoku's at the end of the first round, right? It ain't those players. This guy's not going to step onto the field and be a 70 catch guy off the rip. I'd be surprised if he caught more than like 25 passes. On top of all that, with the Cardinals offense, you just look at the offseason moves. Christian Kirk, gone. Chase Edmonds, gone. DeAndre Hopkins, out for six weeks. It's just hard to imagine a world where he's not a wildly safe, sturdy option as a fantasy tight end for a minimum half of the season. I do think there's a world where when those players get back on the field, Trey McBride gets a little bit more acclimated with the offense. We could see like the last month of the season, maybe Ertz falls to like, you know, tight end 11 or 12, but the first, uh, he's not falling outside the top eight tight ends. He's a super safe player for eight, 10, 12 weeks of this season and extremely worth drafting, especially if you want to uh, grab Ertz as your tight end one and then take a shot on an athletic tight end as your tight end two to see what happens throughout the year because Ertz is going to be super solid for the first half of the season. Go with upside that sits on your bench. And maybe if they pop off, you can use them for the second half of the season. But those are my five bust proof players for this year. And if y'all are still bored at the end of this video, we dropped the video two days ago, seven players to let your idiot league mates draft this year in fantasy. I love you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and go hit that 950 line on prize picks. Brandon Cooks, 950. Easiest money I'll make all year. And I make a lot of bets with Animal. Thank you.